Now, NDE Radio, a weekly exploration of near-death experiences and similar encounters with the other side. Now, here's your host, Lee Whitting. Welcome to NDE Radio with Lee Whitting. Whether you're listening on TalkZone, by podcast, through the archives of our ad-free shows on our YouTube channel, or connected through the incredible content of our Facebook page. Nearly 20 years ago at Northern Light Hospital in Bangor, Maine, we started a blessing of the pet therapy dogs on St. Francis Feast Day each October 4th. Because of his love for animals and for his understanding that the natural world is a window for viewing God's love in action, Francis of Assisi has been declared the patron saint of ecology, making him the saint we should call on for guidance as we attempt to save endangered species and all of nature on land and the oceans and the air, save it all from the damage we have done. Back then, I thought of Francis as a 13th century monk who recognized God and the beauty of creation. But today, uh, I have to acknowledge that he saw something more in his near-death awakening. You see, Francis started off his adult life as a brave, naive young soldier going to war against another city in Italy. He was living then in what some uh, want our country to become tomorrow, divided into clusters of armed camps, enemies at war with each other. But he had a spiritually transformative experience and suddenly saw through the politics and greed of enemy city-states and into the oneness of all life. But in the USA today, some are driving our society in the other direction. They want to turn our national democracy into factional armed camps separated by crazy notions of racism and sexism and the desire to be run by dictators. As if to show us bad examples of where we're headed, today we see governments falling to armed insurrections in Africa and closer to home chaos in places like Haiti and Central America where armed gangs kidnap or kill government workers, kill the police, and even kill each other. It's Mad Max the movie come to life. And just look at our borders to see the results. Hundreds of thousands of desperate refugees fleeing from those places to come to America's Statue of Liberty democracy. But then we see the U.S. itself fragmenting into angry pockets like the city-states of St. Francis Day, communities of angry, alienated people armed to the teeth. Only today they're armed with AR-15s. There are Americans out there determined to reduce our 21st century democracy to the Mad Max world of the movies. St. Francis lived in the 13th century, in a city-state version of this Mad Max state of mind. The main difference was people then were armed with swords and arrows, not with 90-bullet clips, drone bombers, and ultimately the nuclear arsenals of today. Nevertheless, it seems to me that Francis, our saint from the Middle Ages, had more to teach us than how to live together with nature. He can teach us about how to live together with each other. I was blessed recently with the rediscovery of a beautiful movie about St. Francis' life titled Brother Sun, Sister Moon. Now, when it came out in 1972, most reviewers hated this film. The New York Times' Vincent Canby called it a movie that confuses simplicity with simple-mindedness while another critic wrote, Zaffirelli's film looks like a Sunday school coloring book. Everything is glowingly photogenic, including poverty and leprosy. Well, they missed the whole point about Francis' spiritual simplicity, except for one reviewer, Clancy Siegel, who wrote in The Spectator, Extraordinarily, Zaffirelli has made a beautiful and simple film. In any event, The simple message of Brother Son helped influence me some 50 years ago to leave a comfortable Victorian home and a successful business career in Philadelphia to move my family to an abandoned farmhouse in Maine, where we cleared fields, planted a garden, raised our kids, uh, Matthew and Kristen, along with goats and chickens, pigs, bees, an orchard and a quarter horse. Happily for us today, though, the the message of the film is summarized in uh, Donovan's title song in the soundtrack. 
and I'll read it to you. It's an amazing work for only 12 lines long. Brother Sun, Sister Moon, I seldom see you, seldom hear your tune, preoccupied with selfish misery. Now, that nature is God's icon window into the love that's infused through this world, St. Francis knew, and and uh, that love is infused through each of us, too. But if we don't look, we don't see. That's what Donovan's saying here. Next line was, Brother Wind and Sister Air, open my eyes to visions pure and fair, so I may see the glory around me. Simply ask for help in opening your eyes, and it happens if you mean it sincerely. The song, I am God's creature, of God I am part. I feel his love awakening my heart. Simply acknowledge you are both separate and part of God. Notice the name of God I am is repeated twice in those lyrics. And it's true for us as both a separate creature, I am, and inseparable part of God, the bigger I am. Brother Sun, Sister Moon, I now can see you. I do hear your tune. So much in love with all that I survey. <clears throat> love for one another and the world is the outcome for the simple requested enlightenment. Not bad for 12 lines of a song. And the movie says the same. Now, I am not naive enough to think watching a movie will convert the Mad Max fascists out there. But if every near-death experiencer would actively spread the word, what they learned firsthand about the love of God in the world, we might just turn things around. Now, let me get on with more about this year's blessing of the Pet Therapy Hospital Dogs part of the show. Today, we continue a tradition the hospital chaplains began two decades ago, the blessing of the pet therapy dogs at Eastern Maine Medical Center. We did it each year on or near October 4th, St. Francis Feast Day, when churches and animal shelters around the world celebrate the sanctity and spirituality of the animals. After all, God breathed his love into all living creatures, and of all of the celebrations hospital chaplains perform, including baptisms and marriages I did, my most favorite has always been the St. Francis Day blessing of the pet therapy dogs. To love a dog and then train it to freely share its love with sick and depressed strangers in need of comfort is a calling so demanding and at the same time so rewarding that the dogs and their owners deserve acknowledgement at least once a year. Even just caring for a pet, though, is like taking marriage vows to have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us part. That's the solemn vow. It's like we marry our animals through shared love and dedication. More than 30 years ago, my wife Charlene and I were on a road trip visiting the small towns around Mexico City when we came upon a churchyard that looked more like a barnyard, it was so full of animals. The local farmers had brought not only their dogs and cats, but milk cows, roosters, ducks, sheep, goats, and rabbits to the annual blessing of the animals. It was, of course, October 4th, the feast of St. Francis of Assisi, Francis the saint from whom the current pope took his name. Francis was born in Italy in 1181 to a wealthy cloth merchant, and Francis became a soldier in his youth, fighting the nearby city-states. Captured and imprisoned for a year, he fell ill and may have experienced a near-death experience as a result. In any event, he recovered with a religious conversion that led him to renounce his father's wealth. In fact, the story goes that he took his clothes off in the town square, gave them to his father, and told him, Only God is my father now. Francis said Jesus told him to rebuild my church. Ultimately, Francis founded the Franciscan Order of the Friars Minor and became a leader of the movement of evangelical poverty in the Middle Ages. His consecration to poverty and charity gave him a personal charisma that drew thousands of followers. 
Francis' devotion to Jesus' way of life and his desire to follow Jesus' example reflected and reinforced important developments in medieval spirituality. The Pavarello, the poor little man, is one of the most venerated religious figures in Roman Catholic history. And for Francis' love of all the animals, in 1979, Pope John Paul II recognized him as the patron saint of ecology. Now, here are the ending lines of a poem by Dr. Doggerel, uh, titled, In, uh, In October Comes St. Francis' Day. Of Francis are many stories told how he loved animals, and bold to save a wolf who'd eaten sheep, he made the crazy, loving leap of negotiating with the farmers, not to kill the wolf or harm her, but rather feed the wolf instead with scraps to be her daily bread, so sheep no longer would be eaten. Such loving logic can't be beaten. Because St. Francis loved all creatures, his prayerful words and works are featured in this first week of October, and animal blessings are the sober result of all St. Francis' love. Twelve hundreds wisdom, like a dove, descends on all who love their pets, and kennels, shelters, even vets arrange for blessings to be made. Pets are eternal, unafraid, in Francis' name, in his name spoken, his love through history comes unbroken. The Greek historian Herodotus coined the saying, only the good die young. That was true for St. Francis, who lived only 45 years, and it's especially true for our pets, unless your pet is a parrot or a turtle. Our pets' short lives are there to remind us over and over that our lives are short as well. But we don't want it to end there, for ourselves or for our pets, which brings me to a traditional part of this service, the reading of the Rainbow Bridge. Just this side of heaven is a place called Rainbow Bridge. When an animal dies that has been especially close to someone here, that pet goes to Rainbow Bridge. There are meadows and hills for all of our special friends so they can run and play together. There's plenty of food, water, and sunshine, and our friends are warm and comfortable. All the animals who had been ill and old are restored to health and vigor. Those who were hurt or maimed are made whole and strong again, just as we remember them in our dreams of days and times gone by. The animals are happy and content, except for one small thing. They each miss someone very special to them who had to be left behind. They all run and play together, but the day comes when one suddenly stops and looks into the distance. His bright eyes are intent. His eager body quivers. Suddenly he begins to run from the group, flying over the green grass, his legs carrying him faster and faster. You have been spotted, and when you and your special friend finally meet, you cling together in joyous reunion, never to be parted again. The happy kisses rain upon your face, your hands again caress the beloved head, and you look once more into the trusting eyes of your pet, so long gone from your life, but never absent from your heart. And then you cross the rainbow bridge together. Near-death experiencers know that the souls of animals go into the light. But what do the various religions say about animal souls? In an article from December 12th, 2014, reporter Adam Epstein asked, do all go dogs go to heaven? He noted that a few years before Pope Francis made the New York Times when he told a little boy whose dog had recently died that paradise is open to all of God's creatures. Also, Pope John Paul II said back in 1990 that animals do have souls. Some Christian churches differ, however, on whether animals are welcomed into heaven. Mormons take a clear position that animals can go to heaven. Islam offers no clear answer. In Islam, all souls are eternal, including those of animals. But in order to get to heaven, beings must be judged by God on Judgment Day. And some Muslim scholars say animals are not judged as humans are. Others say that they are judged, but it's unsettled about what exactly happens to them after that. The Quran does say that those who enter paradise can have whatever they want, though. 
So perhaps you can just bring your pet soul with you. Buddhism views animals as conscious beings, noting that humans can be reborn as animals and animals can be reborn as humans. Humans and animals are all interconnected. Hinduism also outlines a type of reincarnation in which a being's eternal soul is reborn on a different plane after death, continuing until the soul is liberated. Animals have souls, but most Hindu scholars say that animal souls evolve into the human plane during the reincarnation process. So Hindus say animals are a part of the same life-death-rebirth cycle that humans are, but at some point they cease to be animals and their souls enter human bodies so they can be closer to God. And in Judaism, it's implied that animals do have souls, and Jews who keep kosher don't eat the blood of birds and mammals because that's where their souls are said to reside. For most pet lovers, of course, the answer is clear. All do dogs do go to heaven. And for the avatar relationship of pets to people, I turn to Scott Adams' cartoon, Dilbert. In one Sunday paper, Dilbert, the corporate engineer, and Dogbert, the conniving dog, are having a conversation. And Dilbert asks the dog, Do you ever wonder about the true nature of reality? I mean, is any of this real? And the dog replies, Maybe we're a digital simulation that was designed to entertain a higher intelligence. And Dylan then asks, Well, how would we be entertaining to them? And the dog says, the usual way, by being idiots. The cartoon could have ended there, but then the dog added, I have a little secret. Our creator is using me as an avatar to guide you into a better understanding of your reality. And Dilbert replies, I don't believe you. And Dogbert says, he knew you'd say that. This is all an inside joke from Dilbert's cartoon creator, Scott Adams, yet it's strangely true. Pets do guide us into a better understanding of our reality. Further, I believe our Creator gave us pets to guide us into a better understanding of the reality of love. Some of you have listened to my podcast, NDE Radio, a show about near-death experience. As a chaplain here, I heard many stories from patients who had coded and then been resuscitated about what they saw while they were on the other side. Some met angels. Some saw de deceased family members, and some were delighted by the spirits of pets who had died, full of eternal life and so happy to reunite with them again. Let me tell you a couple of those stories. A while ago on this program, I inter interviewed Randy Kay, an NDE ear who told of his joy at seeing the dog he grew up with as a boy. I asked him to describe the scene their souls were living in. <clears throat> forms appear, he said, in multi-dimensions as though I was seeing heaven from another aspect entirely new to me. It appeared as though I had previously viewed a flat surface in this world, and then suddenly that flat surface grew into different stratums. Everything glistened in, in softly lit shades, strikingly green hills, and majestic mountains blended into contiguous patterns such as that I could instantly climb a mountain or run through a grassy field, or swim in the life-giving stream. Water from the streams nourished everything they touched. Even the rocks absorbed the waters. Life sprouted before my eyes. Plants of every kind budded forth new flowers over and over again in a slow, graceful motion. Illuminating light fused all of heaven with its abundancy of life that elicited an overall feeling of profound comfort and peace. One of the scenes revealed to me was a group of children joyfully playing in an open field of flowing grass. They chased butterflies and petted creatures like mellow wildcats, but with a different and softer appearance than those I've seen in zoos. These creatures were large like lions and playful like dogs. People in this lush place exuded joy, and their numbers exceeded my wildest expectations. Were there animals? Yes. They roamed freely and included all types and kinds, including dogs and cats, as part of the river of life. And then he talked about how joyous it was to be suddenly reunited with his boyhood dog. 
Now, some folks experience their deceased pets coming back for a visit right here. National Public Radio told a story of how a woman was invited to a backyard party, and walking up the driveway, she saw a beautiful collie that looked just like Lassie. When she got to the party herself, everyone was having a good time, and she saw the dog jumping and playing and catching a ball in the air. But then it started to rain, and everyone picked up the food and moved indoors. Carrying in the paper cups, she was the last one in. She said she looked back and made eye contact with the dog, who was now sitting alone in the yard watching everyone leave. When she got inside, she asked the woman who lived there, But what about the dog? What dog? was the reply. The collie, the one that looks like Lassie. There was a long pause, and then the woman said, That was my dog. She died two years ago. She's buried out there in the backyard. There are also stories of ghostly dogs who have saved lives. Here's a Dr. Doggerel poem based on a true story. Grandpa had a dog named Spitzy. Short hair, short legs, not all that nifty to look at, but that dog was his. Dedicated, don't you know? He'd follow Grampy where he'd go, an old man with an old dog there. Call it love or call it care, that dog was there. Then old Spitz, he died one day, not saying much, just passed away, and Grandpa never was the same. He didn't smile much. Life got lame, and so did he with Spitzy gone. One day Grandpa drove to town to get a haircut, buy some food, but not too much with Spitzy gone. Grandpa slept less, no big deal, till he fell asleep behind the wheel. The car was drifting off the road when Grandpa felt his head explode cause Spitzy barked right in his ear, barked him awake, a warning clear to save Grandpa from a hideous death. That dead dog barked out, full of breath, to give Gramps one last warning sigh, sign and saved my Grandpa just in time. Endy ears say we meet our loving pets after we die in some big field beyond the sky because God's love wouldn't be complete without our pets to greet us home. Grandpa died peaceful in his sleep, a happy man because he could keep a memory of that day Spitz saved old Grandpa from an early grave. He died knowing he would meet that Spitz dog on some golden street with no leash needed, bound by love, by Gramps and Spitz and God above. Here's a prayer attributed to St. Francis. May God bless us with discomfort at easy answers, at half-truths and superficial relationships, so that we will live deeply in our hearts. May God bless us with anger at injustice, oppression and exploitation of people and the earth, so that we will work for justice, equity, and peace. May God bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer, so that we will reach out our hands to comfort them and change their pain to joy. And may God bless us with the foolishness to think that we can make a difference in our world, so that we will do the things which others say cannot be done. Amen. Now we ask God's blessing for these pet therapy dogs. Blessed are you, holy source of all nature, maker of all living creatures. On the fifth and sixth days of creation, you called forth fish in the sea, birds in the air, and animals on the land. You inspired us to call all animals our brothers and sisters. We ask you to bless these animals by the power of your love, enable them to live fully in praise of your name. May we always praise you for all your beauty and creation. Blessed are you, Lord, in all your creatures. Amen. Well, my thanks again to Therapy Dogs and their owner trainers who share their pets with those in need. And thanks to you for listening. If you'd like to hear this show again or any of our more than 500 archived ad-free NDE interviews, go to TalkZone's NDE radio site and hit the Past Shows button. Or go to our YouTube channel, NDE Radio with Lee Whitting, where you can subscribe to and comment on the complete NDE Radio Library. And be sure to check out our NDE Radio Facebook page. Just search NDE Radio with Lee Whitting on your Facebook app. 
and listen again next Monday, 11 a.m. Eastern at Talk Zone for more NDE Radio. I'm your host, Lee Whitting, saying once again, thanks for listening.